Hey, I'm Alex Radcliffe from Board Game Co. And this is an unboxing and rambling of Unsettled from Orange Nebula. Now, if you're new here, when I say unboxing and rambling, I mean it. I will talk about whatever comes to mind as I go through this, including the game itself. I, I will talk about the game itself. I did just finish watching this tutorial from Orange Nebula. We'll talk about that later. Remind me in case I forget. But let's go ahead and get on into it. First of all, coffee shot as usual. And one thing I've noticed about this, this table over here, I have a new table, which I link in the description down below. is from Band Pass Game Design. I'll talk about it more at some point in the future. Right now, I'm just referencing it because I realized that the downside of moving away from my wool tablecloth I had before is now my studio lighting casts shadows on the table, which is not a problem. It's just, it is what it is. But let's go ahead, figure out what to put over here. Let's move these to the side over here. We'll have them a little bit off. We'll deal with these boxes last. I do want to complain to Orange Nebula, first and foremost, about these that they included with the game. That's played out decently smooth. Not as smooth as it could have been. We have just piles of art from the game. Piles of various pieces of art from the game that I genuinely resent them sending it to me. Genuinely. It's not like me being sarcastic. I resent them sending it to me because here's the problem. The art is beautiful. So I feel like throwing these out are a shame because the art is beautiful. I don't want to throw these out, but I also don't know what I would do with them. So they've basically given me an obligation. I, I don't want these going bye-bye, but I, I mean, I, that's not true. I don't feel like these belong in the garbage. They're too nice. But I also don't imagine that I'm framing them. So now they've given me this weird obligation that I will deal with. I'm going to drop them on the floor right now. Maybe that will let me actually throw them out. Maybe. We'll see. Let's go ahead and unbox this thing. So this thing has been around the block a few times, depending on who you are. And around the block a few times is probably the wrong terminolo terminology. But effectively, this thing was, if, I, if I'm doing this correctly, this was a Kickstarter. That part I know. But what I, the correctly part refers to the fact that if I'm, I'm, if I'm getting my information right, they had a container that was delayed, which means Orange Nebula has been basically shipping to a whole lot of people at different points, but we're getting like the last batch over here. So you're seeing one of the last batches over here, I think. Maybe I'm doing it wrong. Maybe it was US versus the rest of the world. I could be wrong with the exact timeline and ordering, but this is the box. And yes, by the way, this is the most annoying box you've ever seen. Not actually annoying, but like Vindication before, they didn't say, hey, you know standard box sizes? Standard box sizes should be a thing. Let's respect those standard box sizes. They they do not respect standard box sizes. I love you, Orange Nebula. I do, genuinely. I'm a huge fan of your company and the way you interact. And in general, the humor, the community, all things Orange Nebula, I am so far a fan of. Except your boxes. Your boxes are a pain. So, let's go ahead and go through this. We do have game trays. Game trays love you too, most of the time. There have been one or two exceptions. I'm sure it wasn't your fault. I'm sure it was the horrible, terrible companies you were working with. But... Let's go ahead, and I'm pretty sure this is Game Trace. This has got to be Game Trace. It's, it feels like it's Game Trace. Yep, yeah, Game... Nope, I don't know. It's Game Trace. We'll go through it. So, let's go through this rulebook over here. And again, what an obnoxious rulebook. Same problem. You, if the rulebook's got to fit in the box, then it's got to look like this. This is Luna. Trust her. That's fine. I can trust Luna, but I don't love the fact that we have a really messed up format for this video. So, we have game set up starting on page 8. Uh, that's going to take us through taking turns, your dashboard, we have comprehension, survival task, time and trust, and then we have the resource board, and we have final details on 27. So page 8 to 27, 19 pages of, well, basically how to play the game. From there, we do have more. So we have advanced directives. Stop. Don't do this. To oh, I love it. I love it. Stop. Don't do this to yourself. Don't read a single word of this until you need to, which hopefully is never. This section is absurd. It exists only for those rare moments when conflicting interpretations, clashing effects, or bizarre turn of events trigger demands of greater details, form digging, and the unfortunate halting of all good times. For those instances, we provide this reference section. May it serve you well. More so, though, may you never, ever need it. I like that. I like that concept. I like the concept of a rulebook section that they told you to not bother referencing, but if you need to, you can. So yeah, basically 19 pages. That part I can live with. The messed up rulebook shape, not a huge fan of. Now, this game, Unsettled, is a game about exploring various uncharted planets. Unfortunately, here's my second nitpick. I do have nitpicks. You see, I'm not, I'm not always nice. I do have nitpicks. We have great player aids, although, to be fair, the player aids, I'm saying they're great without the knowledge or understanding of whether, like, what these do. I, I don't know the game well enough to know if this is actually going to capture the information I need. If it does, they're great play rates. They certainly look pretty. But then my second nitpick, I do not love 
when you have cardboard and that situation over there. So what I mean over here is this. Is it supposed to come out? Maybe it's not supposed to come out. I feel like it's supposed to come out, though. This, this, this feels like it's probably supposed to come out. Let's see. There's no, hmm. Maybe this isn't supposed to come out. I'm going to assume that this isn't supposed to come out. Now, they do have a handy-dandy thing over here, but I'm trying to figure out if there's anything underneath here. Why would they have those trays otherwise? Let's push it out and see. Let's push it out. You see, some people are looking at me like, what are you doing, Alex? You should not be pushing that out. And they're probably right. You know what? I'm not going to push it out further until I need to. What I can't tell is we have these things keeping the cardboard in the tray. What I can't tell is if there's anything in the tray. But I'm going to assume not. I'm going to be nice and assume that I don't resent them for doing that. Because when games do do that, when games give you those divots where things have to push out, it always wears down the cardboard. Like, Dwellings of Eldevel is a great example. Great game. Amazing game trays insert. But then you're always wearing the cardboard down when you push up your, your various uh, faction seats. We have over here, this is where we'll store our various resources as well as other tokens. And then we have this area over here, which is upside down. We'll put these tokens over here. We have our destroy. We have a destroy, destroy workshops, laboratories, and research huts. We'll talk more about those because I know a little bit about the game, about the cost of the building. We have another thing over here. This one I don't know what it's for, but stuff, I imagine stuff goes in here. I imagine. It's got that little uh, orange and blue coloring. I'm a huge fan of orange and blue, by the way. Orange Nebula, in case you're wondering. I do like orange and blue and white. They are my channel colors. And then we have the various boxes, the planet boxes, of which we have two in the base game box. And then we have all these over here. I think that's what we have. I believe so. It certainly looks like it. I mean, these do nicely line up with what we got over here. So I imagine it's just more of that content. But we're not done yet. We do have more, we do have more, and then we have this over here. Again, it's an obnoxious box. It actually comes out and goes back in fairly quickly, so I'll, I'll give you that. It's not like the worst ever. It's just a weird box shape as far as cramming it into your Calyx Cubbies or whatever shelf system you have, along with other games. Let's go ahead and look at these first. These are the dual layer player boards, which are very pretty and also very hefty. Now, it looks like we have six of them. No, we have four of them and we have punch boards after that. So we have four of these, and then we have two punch boards, three punch boards, three punch boards. There we go. So these dual layered boards, beautiful. They look great. You're going to have your little astronauts here. These are your action spots. These are your comprehension tokens. Comprehension tokens you can earn in the game in order to have them as prerequisites for things. So you can become, you know, better at science or building or different things in the game. And those will give you prerequisites to you can build a factory without wasting time if you have enough comprehension, different kinds of things like that. So they're not a currency, they're a prerequisite. We have our endurance, which will slowly go down as the game progresses, and then you hopefully will not fall over and pass out. Then we have the various action spots, which you'll have your own specialization. So for example, if I put down this over here, we have caretaker, which goes over rest, I imagine. So this one will go over rest, replacing rest, if that person took that action skill. The only downside there, and I haven't played the game, so I might be wrong with this. I kind of wish you could have punched out the center here so it would still be dual layered, so you can still slot things in there. Don't know if that would have worked. Could have been cool. But either way, not a big nitpick, but a little nitpick. And then we have a little picture, which you can put a picture there. So, for example, we have our little roster of people, and there's my astronaut. You know, there you have your little astronaut person just over there, just sitting there. Just, you know, choose what you want. Again, would have loved to see, like, more of an astronaut helmet so it doesn't feel like we're looking at a head and then a suit would have been better if it were like a helmet of a person either way let's put that off to the side and then we have the punch boards which i've already punched out my two tiles from i like to punch out punch boards to see just how thick these things are these if you can't see i can't tell if you can see there or not but this is thicker punch board as far as things go this is definitely on the thicker side a nice degree of heft which again that part's not a surprise in general their quality here will be amazing i'll have nitpicks but the nitpicks will mostly come from the fact that Orange Nebula is a design company. I think they're a marketing company. I think they're original company. I think that they don't limit themselves to the standard things. They take a look at things from the stance of what could we do, not what is standard to do, which has pros and cons. Some of the pros are we have these beautiful chunky dice, which will be going to your action spots if you don't smash them all over the place. So we have these over here. And if I recall correctly, these are like basically the currency. You rotate those down. Keep in mind, have not played the game. I've kind of paid attention to half a playthrough. Well, actually, two halves of a playthrough. I have paid attention to the Dice Tower when they did their live playthrough recently, but I did not follow what was going on at all. I have paid attention to Quackle's playthrough. They have a great playthrough with uh, Shira and Jan. Again, did not pay attention at all. And then I 
mostly paid attention to Orange Nebula's own video, the tutorial video of how to play the game. And we're going to talk about two different things here, okay? So first of all, we have Luna here. Luna will be our little person that is, you know, a robot along to help us out. She will be able to help us explore tiles, to, to utilize in different ways that I don't know all the stuff because see aforementioned bit about only partially knowing the game. We have more dice. And let's talk about, let's show you the miniatures and then let's talk about the, uh, the playthroughs and the how to play tutorial. So, what do we have here? We got more and more and more. We have these beautiful tokens. These are like beautiful discs. Are they a standard game component? No, they're not a standard game component. They are these just weird discs that just, I mean, look at these. Look at these discs. Do they go on top? Ooh, look at that. Do we have, can we see underneath it? We can see underneath. We can see underneath just fine. I don't know what's going on, but they are, I don't know what these are for at all for context. I'm sure they're for something. That is how things work. They're often for something. We have resource cubes down here, and then we have the various miniatures, which we'll go ahead and show you. I'll go ahead and show you this one over here. So let's go ahead and zoom in. Let's get the camera to zoom. And you can see that one's like orange, so it's going to reflect the light a little more. Can't get as crisp details on. Let's give you the green one. Green's probably also bright, but they look pretty solid. They look pretty solid. And then lastly, let's give you blue. I think blue will capture capture it well. Blue on blue background. This, These are the miniatures you're getting with this game that will be wandering around your planet boards. Now we are going to open a planet box. This is the part where I didn't fully think through the unboxing. Inherently, to a degree, all the stuff we're going to talk about today could have spoilers. So I don't want to show you that much. We'll start with planet box one Winora, but let's talk about the uh, playthrough and how to play. So playthrough over on Quackle's channel. Shira and Jan had a playthrough of the game, and it has like 6,000 views and zero dislikes. I don't know if you know the YouTube stuff, because you're more like watching videos, but I know the YouTube stuff. 6,000 views and zero dislikes is very impressive. That means like no one from 6,000 people found something to be upset about. And this is the internet. People have an easy time finding things to be upset about. In fact, go ahead and check this video right now when you're watching this and see at what view count we got our first dislike, or I got our first dislike, it's not you, it's me. Because I guarantee you, someone disliked the video. In fact, one of you probably disliked this video just to prove my point right now. You were like, zero dislikes? Come on, please, that's not gonna happen. I'll help you out, Alex, I'll give you a dislike. So thank you for that, for restoring my faith in humanity. I appreciate it. All the dislikes on this video just go to show how much you appreciate me. Thank you. But what's more impressive is if you go to Orange Nebula's video, their how to play, Orange Nebula's How to Play has like 11,000 views, and again, zero dislikes, okay? 11,000 views on a, a 45 minute long How to Play, zero dislikes. How to Plays always get dislikes, because everyone's upset about something. Someone, people just find things to be upset about, like, oh my gosh, you taught the game like this, 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 maybe you talk too fast. No, that's why I got the dislikes. There's always something to be upset about. People always find things to complain about. I generally consider it a win if a video of mine gets to a thousand views before I get a dislike. It's just the way the internet works. So again, both things are impressive, which should go to show two things. One, how much Orange Nebula is appreciated by their community and how much Unsettled as a game is appreciated. And two, that video, that how to play was amazing. Absolutely amazing. So we have the first planet here, Winora, Icky Sticky Beautiful. We'll go through some flavor text over here. Minor spoilers-ish. I mean, nothing serious. I'll, I'll warn you before we get anything more spoilerific-ish. When we left Earth in search of bizarre, wondrous new worlds, this is exactly what we imagined. The circumstances are a bit more catastrophically, catastrophically on the verge of death than anticipated, but awe in the face of uncertainty is the essence of exploration. Strange gargantuan fungal formations tower above us, swarming with alien creatures and dripping with bright liquids. Surfaces are covered in a mysterious powdery substance. The air is thick, almost gelatinous, and there's an uncomfortable abundance of toxic-looking tendrils and suction cups. It couldn't be more alien. It took almost an hour of low-orbit scanning just to find a place to land. So dense is the fungal vegetation. With a world this full, it's impossible to imagine we won't find the things we need to survive. Whether those things kill us is another question entirely. Let's go touch stuff. Okay, I've played ISS Vanguard with Jesse. Do not just run around touching stuff. Introduction, quick setup, planet primer. This is where we will not go into too many things because spoilerific stuff. But effectively, like I said already, Unsettled is a planet exploration game. It's a game where you're exploring different planets. Each of these boxes represents their own different planet that you potentially are exploring. And my understanding, without having played it, 
is that planets are replayable. Yes, there's a degree of knowledge you might have about the planet you're playing, but it's still providing the order things come out, the way things come out. It's still providing a puzzle, just a puzzle that you know a bit more. Think of it as wandering into a dungeon in Gloomhaven, Jaws of the Lion, or just Gloomhaven, where you will find out more as you play the game, but you can still do it again. It's still gonna provide a challenge to manage all those things again. I believe that's how this effectively functions. But we'll have these cards. This, if you haven't played Unsettled, there should be no spoilers. If you've played Unsettled, you'll know more about what's going on. And so if you haven't played Renora, you may not want to watch this stuff because I'll be going through some Renora cards. So basically, the only person who shouldn't watch this part for Warrior Spoilers is someone who has played Unsettled and hasn't played Renora. Otherwise, this stuff's going to be meaningless to you. But it will be beautiful art. Just some beautiful art. Various action spots you'll have in these things over here. Different tiles that can come out as you play Renora. Different things. Ooh, ooh, we're not gonna we're not gonna talk too many about things. We have stuff. We have stuff. Let's go ahead and show you one of those screaming frogs. We have was it screaming frogs? I can't remember. We got something here. I thought I thought I saw something saying screaming frogs. I feel like screaming. There we go. Screaming glow frogs. We're gonna talk about the screaming glow frogs. Screaming glow frogs over here. What happens over there? Before you sit dozens of small before you sit dozens of small amphibious creatures, and that's where we'll stop. So you now know that when you go exploring on Winora, you will have some screaming glow frogs to deal with. That's, it's a weird unboxing, I didn't think this through, but I don't want to go too far down the rabbit hole of showing you stuff, because there could be potential spoilers to those of you who care. What I showed you right now should be nothing as far as potential spoilers. So let's talk about the how to play. The how to play on from Orange Nebula, again, it's 42 minutes long, very easy to watch. I don't actually know how to play the game, just to be clear. It's not because it's ineffective, that's because I was not paying attention. I don't often sit down for 40 I'm very much a visual, I'm a, not visual, I'm a, I like reading rules. I don't like learning from videos. I do tend to throw them on in the background because then when I walk into the rules, I have a better framework of what's going on as I go through the rules. So I already have, reading rules is, a, is an art. It's a, you're basically trying to mentally create a puzzle as you go that you don't yet see the final picture of. So you're trying to create a puzzle but like taking these pieces and sections one at a time and slotting them into this visual image in your head and you don't know how it ends up. Now having that background, playing the game, seeing a playthrough, listening to someone do a how to play, it kind of throws this vague shadow image up so that as I go through it, it makes a little more sense. As I go through it, it all starts to fit into this shadowy canvas of what I have explored. That's That's the most artsy way I can explain rule thinking. But the point is, that I watched the, or I listened to, the unsettled rules. Let's see if I can follow this over here, this handy dandy little thing to put these things back. So I listened to the, the rules for unsettled in order to get that shadowy image in my head so that when I read the rules for unsettled, I can actually understand what's going on instead of having no clue whatsoever. So from there, these will go on top. Now these should be a punch board and should be in some way going to something else. I'm gonna go ahead and mute my phone because I apparently I forgot that section of the of the video, because I usually do that before my videos, although sometimes here and there, you will hear dings as I go through, well, videos. Okay, now the problem is this goes on top, and then we have different planets. So I don't know how to continue this because of the spoiler part. What I will say is this, how about this? If you don't want anything spoilery at all, let's call it quits now and walk away. If you still want me to keep going, well, now it's your fault because I'm warning you that I'm gonna talk about things, not extensively. I'm not gonna show things. I don't imagine there's much in the way of spoilers, but we'll go through it. The Petrified Wastes. Gracchus is a sand swept desert rune ravaged by a planet wide chemical storm, once home to a planet, blah, 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 blah. And then we have rules, rules. I just don't wanna read all the stuff to you. I really don't, I really don't wanna do it. So the how to play video, the how to play video from Unsettled, from Orange Nebula, is first of all hilariously funny you should watch it second of all is it is useful the general idea of this is you're on a planet you're exploring you'll be moving your various astronauts around to to accomplish different goals you'll be slowly leveling up your skills the, those prerequisites i talked about where you have to get better at different things each planet will have stated goals that you're trying to work towards so you have specific goals that are planet dependent as far as how you implement them your various status effects and cards different different uh, you have all these different cards that give you different things so you'll you might become sticky what does Sticky do? Not Nothing on its own, but it might interact with the world around you in ways that are either pleasing or very uncomfortable. Your astronauts might be in distress and need help from other people. You will need different resting or different uh, building structures, moving around the board, utilizing uh, Luna, your little robot. We have all these, these cards here, and acquired paste. I just, I love that. I love the 
the humor behind that. Okay, we'll go ahead and put this one back as well. And then I think I'll just read the back of the others. Is there a back? There's a back. Let's read the back of the others. Because again, I don't want I don't want to open it up. Space is <laughs> space is hard. Try harder. That's what it says on the back of the box over here. Very inspiring. I walked away thinking that that is definitely what I want to hear. Let's continue this this putting this part away over here. Okay, we'll get that in there. We'll have our various trays that slide nicely in there. And then we have the rule book, the cursed rule book. But this, I'll put these play raids up there. And then we can put this back down. I want to get this tabled. Now, don't get me wrong. I want to get tabled along with like 15 other things. So um, I'll, I'll try to get it tabled. Let's go through the backs of these boxes. I will peel off the shrink because I that gets it one step closer for me being actually able to play this stuff. And then this is Planet... Is there a number for this one? The other two had numbers. This is Planet 3. Planet Zeron. Sorry for that noise. Now, one of these, one of these I think is the backer creative planet they had on the Kickstarter. Zeron. Cautiously explore a crystalline crypt to commute, commune with ancient beings and access long-forgotten alien memories. That sounds fun. Then we have Planet Kalios. Uh, Kaliphos. Kaliphos. Let's go ahead and take this plastic off. And then we'll go ahead and... Okay, let's open this. This is hunt for clues that could lead you home while being hunted inside the drifting planet-sized head of a monstrous ancient being. Again, sounds delightful. So this is a game, by the way, for context. I almost didn't back Orange Nebula. In fact, if Orange Nebula is watching this at some point, if Orange Nebula is watching this at some point, Someone on their team may remember this this conversation I had with them. This is way back when. Because I backed this game right when I was starting to get into content creation. And I debated getting the game. I was like, on the one hand, it's from the people who made Vindication, so I should get it. On the other hand, I don't have a clear picture of the game I'm getting. And so, do I want to spend like $100 plus dollars on a game that I don't know? And so I hit a dollar back, whatever it is. And then I forgot to up my pledge. Yendral. Delve into a labyrinthian, a, a labyrinthian coral construct with flash floods at every turn, but tread lightly lest you anger the planet itself. Again, I want to explore all of these. And so what I did is, I got the notification a while later, and I went into the pledge manager, and I saw that the pledge manager had increased pricing in it. And I was like, I was on the fence as it was, and I kind of backed for a dollar. And I, I wasn't researching things as heavily back then, because I wasn't doing the, the Kickstarter roundups that I do every week now. And I didn't realize that. I didn't realize that it was going to be more expensive, and it is what it is. And I just looked at the thing, and I saw, oh, yeah, they say in the FAQ it's going to be more expensive than the pledge manager. Whatever. That's on me. And so I reached out to customer service, and I said, hey, listen, I have a dollar pledge. I totally get it if the price is the price. I just, listen, speaking frankly, I was on the fence as it was. If the price can't be raised, if the price in the pledge manager is what it is, that's fine. I missed it. I didn't realize. I'm on the fence. If you lower the price to what it was on the Kickstarter, I can happily back it because I'm on the fence enough to be pushed over. If you can't, I can totally get it. No hard feelings. It's on me for not reading the fine print, but I'm just not going to up my pledge. And they're like, hey, totally understand. We'll go ahead and do a solid. Again, I like Orange Nebula as a company for a reason. For a lot of reasons. It's not because of just that. And so because of that interaction, that's why I have this on my table. Because I then up my pledge, because if they're going to match the Kickstarter pricing, at that point, I even feel like I get a deal, because technically I'm getting a discount. Sure, the discount's just what it was in the Kickstarter, but either way. And so I went ahead and backed it. And I, I wasn't sure I wanted to back it. I wasn't sure, I wasn't happy with my decision until even just recently, when I've started to see people playing this game and really enjoying it. Stranos. Navigate a swirling mass of metallic asteroids and floating lava held together by rampant magnetism and polarity fields. Again, exciting. I'm most intrigued by the monster's head, personally. But yeah, I think Orange Nebula, I think this Unsettled is a game that I will enjoy. Specifically because of the fact that I, if you watch my content, you already know this, I do not love... That's not true. I do love. I just don't play. I, I have a hard time playing campaign games. I like them in theory. I pull them out. I set them up. I play them for two or three days. And then I put them away and forget to pull them out again. And then I have left there sitting. Like, Assassin's Creed is a game I'm like 15 missions in. And, like, to mentally get back up to where I was, to mentally remember what I was doing and how to play and the best situation, I can do it. I mean, 15 missions in, I have the muscle memory, but it's an extra hurdle. So I want to, but will I? Those are always the questions. I think this one's different. 
This one feels more like Too Many Bones in the approach to campaign stuff. Yes, there's missions you dive into, but they're more localized. It's not really campaign play in the everlasting long way where I am committing to some long thing. You play a planet. You pack it up. You put it away. Rinse and repeat. It's fine. It's accessible. I like that a lot more. I will keep those games a lot longer. To me, games with campaigns are almost a conversation where I'm like, okay, great, I'll play it so that I can get rid of it. I mean, that sounds a little harsh. I'm not playing it so I can get rid of it. But when I'm done playing it, I look at campaign games. When I finally do play Gloomhaven, if I finally play Gloomhaven, it's a game that will move on. Isis Vanguard. When I finally finish Isis Vanguard, when it shows up and all that, it's a game that I don't imagine I'm going through again. Is it replayable? Sure, absolutely it's replayable. It very much is, by the way. Based on my experience with Isis Vanguard, definitely replayable. But I'm just not going to. I'll go through it once, I'll experience it, and then because it's an obligation, I will pack it up and move on. There are exceptions. Exceptions like Wild Descent is a good exception. Because it's accessible, because it's 10 campaigns, I can knock it out across two weeks and then don't feel like I committed for months at a time. And plus, I like Wild Descent a lot, so that's a different problem too. But yeah, I, I like approachable games. Campaign games constantly pull me in, they constantly tempt me, I still bite on them, but they, they see a certain amount of play and then either I move on or... Or maybe I finished them in some cases, rare cases. Either way, that's been your unboxing of Unsettled from Orange Nebula. Possibly one of the lesser exciting unboxings I've done. I didn't think through the spoilerific nature of what I was doing before I sat down with a knife on the table and my coffee. The good news is I still have the coffee, so I'm going to go ahead and finish that. Until next time, I'm Alex Radcliffe from Board Game Co., and I hope you have a good one.